Yeah. It's okay. All right. Well, we can go ahead and get started. And if we have anyone who joins us, um, they are more than welcome to come in. There are some treats at the back if anyone hasn't already seen those. Um, please feel free to partake there, not for me. They're from some sweet saint amongst St. John's. They're delicious. They are. <laughs> good, good. Um, for those of you who I don't know, my name is Sarah Michael Trubiano. I am one of the folks teaching um, our Walk in Love series at Episcopal 101, so it is a pleasure to be with you all this morning. Uh, today we are going to be discussing what I was joking, but I stand by it as one of the most interesting of topics, the liturgical calendar. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Um, and kind of how we as Episcopalians structure our year and our seasons. Um, so before we get into that, we'll do a little opening prayer. So the Lord be with you. Almighty God, all times are your seasons and all occasions invite your tender mercies. Accept our prayers and intercessions offered in this place today and in the days to come through Jesus Christ, our mediator and advocate. Amen. Amen. So just to start us off, I wanted to do a little activity and you can kind of get to chat with some of the folks around you. So kind of a pair, connect and share. So I want you to think about as we think about like a calendar and how you orient your time. Do you have any special days or a special day that you use to orient your own time? Um, so what is that day and how do you orient around it? Uh, is there a holiday in the church year that's most important to you? How do you observe it in your family? And then lastly, think back over this past week. How did you spend your time? Think of your time as like a pie chart if you want to, and if you're a, a visual person, you can draw it out or a tactile person. So sleep, work, service, leisure, family, church, etc. What does that tell you about how, what you value and how you orient your life? So you don't have to answer all of them. If certain ones speak to you, um, you can just focus on those. But if you'll turn to someone next to you, it can be two or three in a group. Um, introduce yourself if you don't know them, and we can take a couple minutes to share amongst yourselves. So it is, do you have a special day or special day that you have yourself or wherever you are? And what is that day? Are you still with college medicine? I was thinking that everything you made up, but it was kind of hard to I'm 
I'm so sorry. No, you're
Unless y'all are like, no, 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 I need some more time. Be <laughs> the last person sharing. Yeah, I'm 
I cut off great conversation rather than <laughs> feeling like Strange. dead space. That's a good sign. Um, and for our folks who watch online afterwards, I hope they had some time to reflect as well. But does anyone, not everyone has to share. Does anyone want to share some, some thoughts if a question spoke to you or some common things in the group that you were talking with that may have come up? about how, like a favorite holiday or how you orient your time? We loved Easter. Easter, why? Including Monday, Thursday, mm -hmm. including the Great Vigil, mm -hmm. just because that's what we love. Yes, mm -hmm. yes, I love that. Anyone else? She's doing mine. Monday, <laughs> Thursday, actually. Oh, Monday, Thursday. Yeah, Monday, Monday, Thursday for me, I was just letting my little team over here know that um, mm -hmm. it's a, a time of great reflection mm -hmm. and to kind of center yourself on what's to come. Mm -hmm. And just taking that quiet time to um, remind us all of the here and now yeah. and what happened 2,000 years ago. Yeah. So, yeah. <clears throat> Thank you. Thank you for sharing. Me. Yes. I said Good Friday. Um, yeah. <clears throat> for me, the Good Friday is the saddest moment in the in the church year, and it's like the um, the anticipation of the vigil the next day, knowing that we're going to celebrate the resurrection the next day. Mm -hmm. I find that Good Friday to be a really powerful. Mm -hmm. Uh, marker in my year. Mm -hmm. Of course. Anyone else? Anything that spoke to them? Talked about um, and, and do the baptismal banners and um, all four, traditionally all four of the opportunities during a church year are when we do baptisms, but All Saints Sunday is always just so special. Mm -hmm. um, and then how we're reflecting and Share about the, the what y'all were singing on. Oh, on on um, All Saints Sunday, November third, the choir is sing, is doing a um, requiem, All Souls requiem. Mm. It's beautiful. Or, 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 it's, or, 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 I think that sounds right. Yeah. It's, not our <laughs> it's, it's really some of the most beautiful music. Yeah. It's really wonderful. Yeah. And you know, with um, Halloween in our culture, kind of gets lasted but it is part of the recognition mm -hmm. of all hallows eve all saints and then all souls mm -hmm. and so um those those are special to me too and our our grandchild was baptized last year on all saints sunday and it, it was very special day, so. well thank y'all so much and thank you for taking that time to share with one another um so there are a lot of times that a lot of ways in which we orient time and measure time you know when we're kids maybe it's counting down the day to our birthday or a, a holiday i know some of y'all are a, a holy day here uh, christmas i heard some of y'all mention as something that was special um maybe like a, a a teacher we were talking about academic years some people's brains are oriented that way um but for us for our church calendar 
what's wonderful is our Book of Common Prayer really outlines how we need to measure our time as Christians and as Episcopalians. So the church calendar appears in pages 15 through 33 in the Book of Common Prayer. So before we even learn about how to become a Christian through our baptismal covenants or learning about um, how to engage in weekly worship, we learn about how we are to measure time and how we are to orient ourselves within the church calendar. One of the quotes that is in the book, so if you all are following along in Walk in Love, um, what the book said, in the Christian life, we measure our time not by the things we achieve or the things we need to do, but rather we measure all our time by what God has already done for us in the birth and resurrection of Christ Jesus. So like I said, I heard some of you all talk about a favorite um, holiday in the church or a favorite holy day. Um, and so for us, the church, as you can imagine, is oriented around two specific days, Christmas, so the Feast of Our Lord's Nativity, and Easter, the Sunday of the resurrection. So we orient all our time around these two days. So the first, um, we can talk about Christmas because our church calendar doesn't begin on January 1st or at the beginning of an academic year. It, believe, it begins on the first Sunday of Advent. So that first Sunday of Advent, four Sundays before Christmas, is where we begin our year with the expectation and excitement and anticipation for the birth of Jesus. And then with Easter, of course, Unlike Christmas, which always falls on December 25th, Easter doesn't have a set date, so it's determined by when the first full moon occurs after the spring equinox. So as y'all have seen in calendars, uh, Easter can range anywhere from March 22nd to the latest of April 25th. But if you're ever curious of when Easter will fall, that is another handy thing in our Book of Common Prayer. It has a table listing the date for every single Easter from 1900 to 2089. So we still got wow. a good couple of years to use our Book of Common Prayer. Yep, very efficient. Um, so if you're looking at pages 882 to 883. Uh, but so from Easter day, the rest of our time is measured and counted out. And we, as Episcopalians, have seven liturgical seasons that we um, orient our time around. And each season has a different emphasis that helps us focus on some different aspect of our spiritual life. So we start, like I said, with Advent and we go through Christmas, Epiphany, Lent, Holy Week, Easter, and the season after Pentecost, which is also known as ordinary time. Not because it's mundane or anything, but because we count it like we do ordinal numbers, the first Sunday after Pentecost, the second Sunday after Pentecost, so on and so forth. Um, what's really cool is that the changing seasons of the church year remind us that there's room for all of our experiences in the Christian journey. And it also kind of, I'll reflect on this a little bit later, but the different iterations and, and ways in which we encounter Jesus and we encounter Christ, depending on the season of his life and the liturgical season that we are in. And so how do we distinguish between these seasons? Um, the book talks about how each season has its own symbols, but what I thought was also important is that each season has specific scripture readings that you're gonna hear time and time again. Um, music is another one that we've already mentioned uh, here is the specific hymns that you may have or anthems depending on the time of year. We can also distinguish between the seasons through the omission or inclusion of certain words and phrases. Think in Lent, how we exclude Alleluia from our vernacular versus in Easter time, we include it in abundance um, to signify that joy of the resurrection. And we talked about this on the first Sunday of this class, if you all were here, that the Book of Common Prayer gives us a lot of guidance on what we are to do and how we are to orient ourselves in services and in our church. But a lot of it is also left to us for our interpretation. And so things like liturgical colors and decorations really just come from years of tradition. It's not specifically outlined in the Book of Common Prayer. So purple is a color that we use for penance and preparation. Think Lent is when you'll see that. Um, some churches use it for Advent, but also you'll see blue during Advent time. 
the same idea of that preparation, but also the incorporation of the idea of hope and that anticipation for the birth of Christ. Red um, really signifies sacrifice and the Holy Spirit. So you'll see that on things like Palm Sunday, Pentecost. Um, you'll see it at ordinations. White and gold means great joy and celebration. So you'll see those vestments and those altar um, uh, colors on Easter, Christmas, weddings, baptisms, funerals, and then green. So that growth in our faith is when what you're gonna see, you see it right now during the season of Pentecost. So that's the largest time of the year. Um, and we can see that it's the largest time of year through this graph. So this is from St. Paul's in uh, California. They graciously let me steal it from their website. Um, I didn't ask, but <laughs> I'll give them credit here. <laughs> I think this is a pretty commonly used uh, graph, especially if you're a visual person to kind of see how we orient our calendar. And so, like I said, Advent season right at the top, that's where we begin. That is our beginning of the new year for the church. So that time of waiting and preparation and expectation. So as we move through these, we talked about different symbols that you may see associated with each season. Um, can anyone think of maybe a symbol during the Advent season that you think of that helps you know that you're in that time of preparation and anticipation and waiting? An Advent wreath, exactly, ding, ding, ding. So every week where we light that Advent wreath to signify um, you know, where we are each week in that preparation to Christmas Day. Then of course we have our Christmas season, um, which is not one day. Uh, I heard someone say for at home, it's a multi-day celebration for them. It's a multi-day celebration for us in the church too. We have our 12 days of Christmas. So that season concludes on January 5th. And so that's when we get into our season of Epiphany, um, where we remember the arrival of the wise men um, who followed a star to worship Jesus. And that season of Epiphany gets us all the way to Ash Wednesday. So during the season of Epiphany, we hear stories of the way that the light of Christ spread to all areas of the earth and how we are also called to do that. And then we get to Lent. Um, and Lent I, I find to be a beautiful season, but one that kind of gets like a, a, a bad rep sometimes for maybe people who, um, you, you know, it, it, that it's, I think a lot of people see it as a time to be like sad and down and all that thing, but all those things, but it's really this time of, of preparation, not punishment, um, that we're called to follow the example of Jesus who prepared for his earthly ministry with prayer and fasting and that we have these 40 days of Lent to do a similar thing, to remind ourselves of the time that Jesus spent in the wilderness tempted by Satan, the 40 years that the Israelites spent wandering in the wilderness. And we often will pray, again, we talked about different scripture you may incorporate during certain seasons. During Lent, you'll hear the Ten Commandments, um, oftentimes as a way to remind ourselves of that intentionality um, and that seriousness of the season. And then that gets us to um, Holy Week. So that week from Palm Sunday to Easter, and that those liturgies really help us walk with Jesus through his final days on earth. So think about from his entry into Jerusalem to his last meal with his friends, to the cross and to the grave. So that Holy Week includes Palm Sunday, Holy Monday, Holy Tuesday, Holy Wednesday, which also I didn't know this is some kind of some, sometimes called Spy Wednesday. Has anyone ever heard that oh, phrase? Oh, that was something Spy Wednesday. I that. Like spy, like like Judas says a, like a spy, S P Y. I I had never heard that before, but it was <laughs> in our book. I'm gonna have to I may have to go to a priest on that one, even though this was a Me too. this was written by <laughs> this was written by a priest, so I trust it. <laughs> but I have never Obviously, never heard that before. Um, but then Monday, Thursday, which we talked about, Good Friday and Holy Saturday. And so our season of Easter, we've gotten here to the bottom of the circle and come, um, begins with the great vigil of Easter. Some of you all mentioned that as a beautiful, beautiful service 
And because Easter is such a wonderful, glorious time, we can't just celebrate it for one day. We celebrate it for 50 days. So that lasts from Easter day to the day of Pentecost. And during this time, we rejoice extravagantly. So all our alleluias come back um, and we express our deep joy in the resurrection. And then we get ourselves to Pentecost and that falls 50 days after Easter. And we remember the coming of the Holy Spirit to the apostles described in um, second acts. And like I said, ordinary time is another name for Pentecost, but this season is really one of, of growth. And it should be a reminder that the walk of faith isn't always going to be these high highs, that it's highs and lows, and that's everyday life. You have those peaks and you have those valleys. Um, and then we begin the cycle all over again um, after Pentecost. And so we, we can think about our church here really as a cycle. Um, and that in all of these seasons, we're focused not on ourselves, but on the birth and the life and the death and the resurrection of Jesus Christ. Uh, I kind of mentioned this a little while ago, but in this, we don't get to pick the version of Jesus that we like best. Um, we don't get to remake him just in our image. And instead, the church year, the beauty of the calendar is that it invites us to walk with Jesus through all his moments and all the seasons of his life and the moments and seasons of our own life and how we can relate to that. So does anyone have any like comments or questions about, yeah. I have a couple of things. Um, uh, I, I don't want to get hung up on numbers, yeah. but I'm curious, uh, first of all, whether Lent is 46 days yeah. because the Sundays don't count and because yes. we start in the middle of the week. And yeah. Yeah. Is that why? Yeah, so this, yeah. the 40 days excluding Sundays. Okay. And yeah. then the second question I had is, why is Ascension Day 40 days after Easter? Because, I mean, we, in the creed we say, you know, on the third day mm -hmm. he goes again, according mm -hmm. to any, you know, and so he's up there, he's, it's mm -hmm. done. Mm -hmm. So <laughs> why do we then celebrate 40 days after? For, for after Easter, the long season of, of Easter, for essentially. Ascension. I mean, I think it's, it's the idea that if we're orienting ourselves around the birth and the resurrection of Jesus, that those are things where we as Christians need to take the most amount of time, even if it's not maybe calendarly accurate. It's the idea of we are placing an emphasis and an importance in dedicating a large portion of our time to recognizing the significance of the resurrection of the birth of Christ. Um, just like it is at nine months from Mary figuring out from Gabriel that she's going to have a baby. And then we celebrate nine months later with his birth. You know, we, condense it down um though you know she deserves the nine months of celebration let's be real um but i think you know that we we as christians kind of have a way of amplifying the the importance of it um while also fitting it into the the calendar of only having a year to kind of go into all these phases of jesus's life that may not be the right answer but it's an answer. <laughs> I think also just with the Easter season, you're building it up too with the day of Pentecost. Mm -hmm. Pentecost being that the Holy Spirit is you know, then you know, um, rising above us mm -hmm. and then leading us into that um, that time of the ordinary time. Right. And I, there's a sense of taking what those 50 days apply to us into that ordinary time mm -hmm. and, mm -hmm. and the remembrance of it all yeah um as we start over i think that makes perfect sense i mean uh, you know a, a, a big swath of time but i guess my question is why there's one day picked out as ascension day mm -hmm. which makes it sound as if that's the day you know so that's the end you know. well and i think that that's a good point that it doesn't end there though like the story doesn't end with jesus yeah. ascending right. the story still goes on so I think that that's important. Yeah. And I wanted to say, so the resurrection and ascension being different things of Jesus after three days rose from the dead and then had time on earth in his resurrected form yeah. before mm -hmm. ascended. Yeah. 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 So it's that's a different, the it's a yeah. Yeah. different thing. So it's yeah. after, so yeah. there's, Good he's dead, he's back, and then he's up there. <laughs> so it's two right. different yeah. days. Yeah. yeah. There's also like, I mean, we, it's not necessarily true that Jesus was born like 
on December 25th. Right. 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 It's it's kind of we took that from like winter solstice mm -hmm. celebrations and sort of refit it mm -hmm. and like to to use it on a calendar. So mm -hmm. it doesn't always mean that like things happen like right. exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Thank y'all. Yeah, I think it was a good point of being like. You know, Jesus being resurrected, and then he takes that time of, I told you so, and then. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. yeah, because then you talk about <laughs> when, what is it? I'd like to clarify my point. Um, you know, in the Nicaea Creed, it says that uh, he got, he, he, he uh, rose again and ascended, but, you know, in Acts, it was, he was uh, appearing to people for 40 days mm -hmm. after, after that. So it, it didn't, you know. It's just part of it. The Nicene Creed is very short. Mm -hmm. so. Yeah, of course. Yeah, and Spy Wednesday refers to Judas Iscariot. Yeah. And I'm not really sure of all the, the wise, oh, but learning something new. And as far as I a, an old story coming back to me from Sunday school or a video or something, Race Catholic, um, <laughs> was wasn't it um, it was doubting that it was with doubting That's Thomas mm -hmm. and that happened during that period of well, time right after he's possibly yes, yes. Yeah. okay because that actually honestly had always been sort of a question of mine <laughs> you know he, how long you know was he here right. in yeah. resurrected form yeah. before the ascension mm -hmm. so I like know. this. Yeah. <laughs> well, and there are, you know, more than just our, our within our seasons, we do recognize that the Book of Common Prayer gives us five special kinds of days to celebrate and observe. So those are principal feasts, Sundays, holy days, days of devotion, and days of optional observance. And so there are seven principal feasts that we are given. Um, so we've mentioned all of them, Easter, Christmas, Epiphany, Pentecost, Ascension Day, Trinity Sunday, and All Saints Day. Um, and those are considered the most important days of the church year. So all Christians are called to celebrate those seven principal, Sunday, uh, principal days. But then we have Sundays as the next one which I find really interesting and, and wonderful that the second most important category that we are given are just our regular Sundays. So the Book of Common Prayer says that all Sundays of the year are feasts of our Lord Jesus Christ. And so that's the reminds us that Christianity is lived every day of the week, you know, year, week in, week out, every year. Um, so not just Christmas and Easter. Third, like I said, we have our holy days. So these include feasts of our Lord. So days that we remember certain important things in Jesus's life, um, like his baptism. Um, other major feasts, so days when we remember like apostles, evangelists, and other important saints from Jesus's lifetime. Uh, national feasts, um, so Independence Day, Thanksgiving Day, those do get recognized in the Book of Common Prayer. Um, and fasts, so Ash Wednesday, Good Friday, um, for all these holy days, the Book of Common Prayer does provide a specific collect or a prayer. Um, so those are in about the 180s. Um, uh, and also there's particular lessons that can be associated with those days so that we as individuals and as a community can remember those important days in our prayers and readings. And I think the Wednesday service that we have here does a particularly good job about recognizing those particular uh, holy days uh, as they come up in the calendar, because um, not every Sunday we can recognize all of them. The fourth group, days of devotion. So these are different from the rest of the calendar in that they're not a single date, but a series of days. So we are called as Christians, the Book of Common Prayer says, to observe these days by special acts of discipline and self-denial. So if we think of the time from Ash Wednesday to Good Friday, the time of Holy Week, um, that time of Good Friday, that these are, are larger groupings of days where the discipline is not beating ourselves up, but instead thinking of the word disciple, so that we're meaning that we're being called to learn and to follow. And our calendar, though, also gives us optional days of observation of observance, excuse me. So these are days where we can commemorate the lives of saints, um, like early martyrs in the church, civil rights leaders like Martin Luther King Jr. or theologians. But overall, our calendar makes it very clear that 
uh, resurrection and celebration of that resurrection are the primary importance in our church calendar. And so our key takeaways that I hope we have from today are that our church calendar tells us how we think, it tells us what we value, and it tells us what we work towards. Um, that we are to work towards that life of, of Jesus and, <laughs> excuse me, and that from that season of Advent, the beginning, that anticipation, that expectation of Jesus coming into the world to the end of the calendar when we start that process all over. Um, it tells us that our work is the work is not the focus, but our lives are are lived in grateful response to the work that God has done uh, through Christ Jesus. So we have about five more minutes. Um, and so we can think about, you know, what ways do we at St. John's, whether individually or as a, a whole congregation, observe and recognize our seasons? Are there different practices that you look forward to in, in anticipation? Um, are there things that St. John's does that you feel really tell us what we as a parish look forward to and what we value through our liturgical seasons and our church calendar? Yeah. The, the music changes. Yeah. Yeah, over the seasons, mm -hmm. which is beautiful. Yep. That's always one of my favorite. I love, I, I remember when um, I got married last year, and when uh, my husband and I met with Betsy, we were like, we love this anthem. And she was like, that's a really like Linton anthem and like warning. <laughs> I don't think you want that at your wedding. And I was like, are you sure we can't have it at our wedding? And she was like, no. <laughs> but to that point, that we can have a great appreciation for things, but they do have that specific season where we get to appreciate them and connect with them. Um, so that is wonderful, where certain things, it makes it more special that you don't get to enjoy it all the time. You get to look forward to it. Um, when, I guess, more of a recent kind of tradition, if you will, since Father Lonnie and his family have come up here, is um, I'm a very big proponent of trying to put a realistic kind of interpretation on, on things. Mm -hmm. um, and um, when he has his Christmas um, Eve vigil, mm -hmm. he, the last two years that he's been here, he has adopted the role of somebody in the Christmas story. So the first year he was the innkeeper. Mm -hmm. And then last year he was, he did hold the baby service but I think he was the I, I think he was September. he was something he's done so many of them. yeah <laughs> he's done but it's it just really spoke to me mm -hmm. and put a very kind of like grounding experience as to for instance from the innkeeper you're like okay I got these people that came to the door and they want to sleep in a barn mm -hmm. like what you know like what's happening and it's just like yeah I mean you really could it, it gave a definite, you know, immersive experience mm -hmm. into what had happened. Mm -hmm. And I really appreciate it. That. Gabriel. That was Gabriel. Got it. Got it. Okay. Yes. 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 He did that one. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, see, I'm like, I'm really glad we're putting a big emphasis on all saints this year. Yeah. I'm excited about our, mm -hmm. our principal feast and yeah. he's giving it. it. It is. All saints is a beautiful it's service. Beautiful. And I think. Um, almost kind of like an end to our, our liturgical year, one of our, our last services that we recognize if we're thinking about, um, you know, the graph that we had. So it, I, I agree that one's a wonderful one. A number of years ago, I decided that during Lent I would give up sugar, mm -hmm. and it was miserable for me because really I am a sugar addict, and I, I was absolutely, abjectly miserable until someone told me oh sundays are not you know right <laughs> sunday is a little easter and ever yeah. since then you know I, I i had to get through it by saying well if jesus could die on the cross i could certainly give up sugar but now i realize that as much as we're abjectly you know melancholy or you know whatever we call it during lent we can also anticipate mm -hmm. that celebration mm -hmm. every Sunday. And I love, um, I didn't know that the second most important 
time. It's yeah. Every Sunday. So yeah, I love it. Piece of I gave yeah. up swearing. Yeah. <laughs> 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 Giving up sugar for Lent makes Easter candy even more. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but I think it does show, you know, that that time of Lent can be that, um, you know, that intentional, the the penitence, the anticipation. Um, so I think it's, in, even though we don't, when we're thinking like colors, um, for purple, we don't use uh, the purple for Advent, but they both have that anticipation season, you know, as we talked about of, of Advent and Lent. So there is that similarity. I loved at Pentecost where we had the figure, the symbols mm -hmm. of the Holy Spirit. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Pentecost is always a favorite of mine, and I love, I, I haven't been, and I'm sure other churches do it, but I love our reading of all the different languages mm -hmm. um, doing the reading that, uh, that St. John's has done for years now um, is a beautiful way, I think, of showing that scripture in action um, for us. Well, wonderful. Well, yeah, Megan. I was going to say one thing I love about the church calendar and about this talk as someone who didn't grow up in a tradition that really recognized the church calendar, um, like there was Christmas and there was Easter, like that was it. Um, I just find it so beautiful because I feel so connected, not only to the story of Jesus, but also to the worldwide church as a whole. Mm -hmm. I know the church as a whole worldwide is walking through mm -hmm. Lent, is walking through Pentecost, is walking through the ordinary days, mm -hmm. or going through Advent, and um, I just love that feeling of connection to the larger Christendom um, through our our daily and yearly traditions that we repeat over and over and over again. It's a really beautiful aspect of the Episcopal tradition. Of course, and knowing like if you're traveling and you go to church somewhere else that yeah. your home parish is doing the same <laughs> well, exact thing is wonderful. Two weeks ago, we were in Westminster Abbey and oh, it was fun. just, it was, it was powerful. Yeah. Um, well, thank you all for sharing. Yeah. I appreciate it. And I hope y'all are able to reflect on you know, not only our, our church time and our church calendar, but also how you um, kind of those opening questions. How do you orient your time? How do you prioritize your time? And what does that mean for, um, you know, showing what you love and value in your life? Um, for next week before our closing prayer, if you are following along in the book, we'll be going over chapter 19, the communion of saints in anticipation of All Saints Sunday. Um, so we would love if you could come and join us. But to close us in prayer, the Lord be with you. And also with you. Almighty God, all times are your seasons, and all occasions invite your tender mercies. Accept our prayers and intercessions offered in this place today and in the days to come. Through Jesus Christ, our mediator and advocate. Amen. Amen. Thank you Thank all. You so Have a great week. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. No, <laughs> no.